Ready? Mm -hmm. In five. Four, I just have three. to remind myself. Stop saying two one. Howdy, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> You're mouthing the words. Wayne's World. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Hi, guys. It's Ryan. And Angela. <laughs> From RNA Music. Flipside Music, Texas. Shh. Your mom and pop guitar shop and lesson studio. That's right. Deep in the heart of Texas, where we're at. Mm -hmm. And we have a guest. Who are you? <laughs> Who are any of us? Isn't that the big question? Well, I'm Ryan. This is true. <laughs> She's Angela. <laughs> Uh, I'm Uncle Book, Tim. Yes. Yeah, Tim from Uncle Book and the Jalapeno Overdrive. Also an artist. Arguably. Arguably. I would argue that. I would say. Tim's a good friend of ours and a long term, long term, long time. <laughs> long time. <laughs> long time and term customer. <laughs> we were just discussing Dude. your first purchase from RA Music. Yeah. 2014? It was. Yeah. Ooh. It was a NAM guitar. Four, so four about years. About this same time. About this around, time, yeah. yeah. January, March, March-ish. But not only a long time customer, he's also become a great friend. We got to cameo on his album, which is great. I played some drums, Angela played some vocals. <laughs> is that what you do? Yes. I had a little guitar solo. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uncle Book and the Jalapeno Overdrive is out now at all fine online streaming locations. Yeah, you can find <laughs> it, right? You can. I'm using your channel for my... <laughs> hey, that's okay. plug away. I don't mind. Anyways, <laughs> we are here to answer your questions. Let's get to it. Alrighty, first question. Randy Moore, do you have any experience with the radial JDX direct drive for live playing? No, I do not. I have <laughs> never used that. I have, however. Well, have you ever used that? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, radial is a tire. Okay. Yeah. I use four of those at a time, usually. <laughs> I have never used that. Now, I have used the Jet City Jet Direct, which is kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's a similar thing. You know, you put it between your the head and the cab your amp, but it, you can plug a XLR cable into it and go direct into uh, the PA system. So it's like a, like a cab simulator. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> and I use that. I've been using one for a mm, couple of months now at the church that I play at mm -hmm. to go, instead of using the mic to mic up my little Fender Super Champ, Super, I use that and it works great. And they're very affordable, the Jet City stuff. Mm -hmm. We're no longer dealers, <sighs> but... <laughs> I still like their stuff, and uh, you know, I have nothing bad to say uh, about Doug, the owner of Jet City. I think he's great. We're still friends, and I can totally recommend that for you. But as far as the radial stuff, no idea. If anybody watching has tried it, leave your comments below and maybe help Randy decide if it's any good or not. Yeah, I'm kind of interested to see what people say. Yeah, yeah me too. I, I'm really enjoying lately finding out what other people think. Mm -hmm. so that's been a really great part of uh, the experience for me so far. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you guys think? That's what I want to know. And they love to tell you. <laughs> yes. They love to tell us, which is great. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good dialogue. I like it. Next question, Demaz Phantom. Thanks again for answering my questions. This is too much dang fun. Do you think Tonewood is a myth or does Bodywood really have an impact? I see too many people arguing about this stuff, saying pickups give your guitar its tone. Yet, I've played mahogany bass wood guitars with the same pickups and I've noticed a significant difference. Cheers, you guys are great people. Thank you. Angela is great people. I nudge Tim because Tim plays guitar. Yeah. And Angela doesn't play guitar as much. And she would probably give two patooties about this question. All right, uh, why don't you go first? Uh, I don't think it's a myth, <clears throat> and the reason that I don't think it's a myth is because if you play a mahogany acoustic guitar or versus like a cedar top acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. there's definitely a difference in the sound. Um, even two guitars made by the same manufacturer, you know, Washburn does this. They'll do the same model, but they'll do it in different woods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can try the same exact model just with a different wood. And there's definitely a noticeable difference in the tone wood. Now, in electric guitars, like any other guitar, you know, you put finishes on there, glosses, all of that factors in to the way the guitar sounds. 
Um, but I don't think it's a myth. I mean, mm -hmm. just just because whenever you have something that doesn't require electronics, it's the natural vibrato of the wood. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I was about to say, I'm gonna spill the beans. <clears throat> we actually shot this video last night already, okay. and then I lost my memory card for the camera. <laughs> Somewhere between here and the house. Wah, wah, wah. <sighs> so frustrating. So, so me and Angela have already answered all these questions once. And yes. uh, I was like, you know, like I said last night. Wait, y'all haven't seen that. So <laughs> it doesn't help. What I said last night was, <coughs> I definitely think mm. uh, wood does make a difference. And I think people who make this argument, nobody concedes that it doesn't make a difference on acoustic instruments. Even the people who say, it's, it's overblown, it's like, well, yeah, on an acoustic guitar or on a cello or on a drum or whatever, yes, wood affects the tone. And But then they come out and say, well, with electrics, of course, with electrics, it doesn't matter. Because the strings don't vibrate? I guess, and that was my point, was I'm, my opinion or my thought is, you know, anything at all that affects the vibration of the string in any way is going to affect the tone. Yeah. Now, on electric guitars, is it less noticeable and less significant than on an acoustic? Yes, I would agree with that. It's not as noticeable on an electric, but I think it's still there and it still affects it. We, we did a video a while back where I took EMG, the same EMGs, you know, a headset and a headset on two guitars where everything was the same except for the maple fretboard. And I did the test and people like say, well, EMGs make everything sound exactly the same. <laughs> But even on that comparison, people could kind of tell a difference between, well, that one definitely sounded different than that one, even though the only difference really was the type of wood used yeah, in construction. Because the maples are brighter wood. That's what they say. Snappier response. And yeah. The majority of the people who watched and listened said they could hear a difference, and there were a few who said, I can't hear any difference at all. So I think it does matter. Um, I think it is, yes, less noticeable mm -hmm. on electrics. But I think part of it's too, like, when you're playing it, when you're holding it, you feel the guitar vibrate. You're, you're feeling and hearing stuff in person that a camera isn't necessarily going to pick up. Yeah. Right. So, I think it does make a difference. There are a lot of people who do. There are some who don't. But that's my opinion. And Tim agrees. There you have it. Validated. <laughs> Next question. You need to stay up. Validated. Validated. Bam! Like, <laughs> you can't do that on TV? You remember that you can't do that on yeah, television? Yeah. Can't do that on the hand turkey that. television. Yes, exactly. Yes. Next question. The pork chops RV. And like I said last night, that's an RV I want to get on if there's pork chops. Oh, I'm hungry. Involved. I know. Yeah, Hello, Ryan and Angela. Happy birthday, Ms. Angela. Thank you. It was her birthday. From the ax from one axe man to another. What would you say is a guitar accessory must have at a gig in case of emergency? Love your channel, Axum Jacks. Some jacks, ooh, kicking axe jacks. They're not laughing. I'm a lumberjack. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's <laughs> okay. Kicking axe. You're proud. You're awesome. Kicking axe jacks. Let's go. All right. Um, must have in case of emergency for a gig. This will be great because Tim gigs as well, so he'll have an interesting answer. I'm gonna go first though. Go, please. I'm my gonna... criteria, my first choices, as I said yesterday, <laughs> was a spare set of strings, mm -hmm. pretty much a necessity, um, and an extra patch cable, like guitar cable. Yeah. And Angela mentioned picks. I said picks. <laughs> she did, because it was like, oh yeah, that would be good to have. A pocket full of picks. Yeah, to have in your gig bag. Because I have shown up before with no picks in my pocket. I thought, what am I doing? How do I not have a guitar pick? Right. That's just wrong. And so I keep I keep an extra bag of picks in my gig bag that I never touch. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep an extra set of strings and I keep an extra patch cable. Mm -hmm. I think those are absolute <laughs> necessities because you will break a string at some point and a cable will crap out on you. 
probably. Although the pig hog cables have not crapped out on me yet. Mm, me so, either. I don't know. What would be your necessities? Um, <clears throat> those are all good, and I definitely keep those. I think probably the most useful... Well, I have two useful things that I keep with me at all times. Um, a multi-tool of some sort. Mm -hmm. you know, a straight like winder a, would be great. Yeah, like a leather Leatherman or even a Swiss Army knife, because for whatever reason, you will find that you need a screwdriver for something. A Phillips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It, it, it just you'll you'll it'll be the weirdest thing you'll be like yeah I gotta I gotta open this amp up and I don't oh I need a Phillips screwdriver for this mm -hmm. so some sort of multi tool or even something with a knife mm. in case you need to cut something oh I always carry a knife mm -hmm. that's not a knife Angela's always ready to cut somebody I mean cut something <laughs> that's right okay, okay. <laughs> um, and a roll of tape ah. hmm. of some sort that's smart that's good. Uh, gaffer yeah. tape. It, yeah, something. Well, I mean, electrical tape is. Or? Yeah, well, for me, it's usually um, like a, a electrical or a duct tape of some sort, mm -hmm. um, because you know tape is handy for set list. It's handy for markers. Um, Sharpies are a good thing to have for <clears> too. So I you use can sign those autographs at the end. <laughs> I used. I have. I played a gig one time where the sun was so bright over the edge of the stage. That I couldn't see the indicator lights on my pedal board, mm. so I wasn't sure what was on or not. Oh. So I took the lid for my pedal board and I used duct tape to create like a little a visor. Yeah, like a little visor to hang over the edge of the. Smart. Good. Yeah. So tape and some sort of multi tool. I mean, those are two things that I keep. That's good. Those are good. Yeah. yeah. I actually have a multi tool in my gig bag. No tape though. Yeah. But I've been there where I needed to change a battery. I'm like, anybody got a screwdriver? <laughs> I got a, mm -hmm. a spare 9-volt battery. Uh, wouldn't hurt if you needed it. And spare batteries. Hey, there's a video idea for you. Gig bag essentials. <gasps> oh, teachers do that. Yeah? Yeah, like YouTuber teachers. Mm -hmm. They're like, what is in your teacher bag? That's like a big thing. Millions of views. And they literally unpack their teacher bag. Like, here's my Sharpies. Here's my notebook. Here's my calendar. This is where I get it. Like you could have your audience mm -hmm. tell you what they keep in their game bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. You guys tell us. What are your backup essential accessories that you need when you're playing? Yeah. You've heard ours. Now tell us yours. Mm-hmm. Below. An idea is born. Yeah. Yes. And thus it begins. <laughs> it's RNA and I helped. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pork Chop. Pork Chops RV. I love it. Oh, yeah. Me too. Next it's question. Be a really awesome album cover with the <laughs> pork chops. Yes, with a pork chop with a pig out the window of an RV. Action jacks. <laughs> <laughs> Lumberjacks, y'all. Lumberjacks. Next question. PRS rocker. Mm -hmm. Hey Ryan and Angela. Oh wait, sorry, that was pork chop. Pork chops RV again. I even have my glasses on today. PRS rocker. What's the guitar over your right shoulder, Ryan, next to the mini flying V? So good to see you guys getting along so well. <laughs> Keep the vids coming. Because we normally don't. So yes. Yeah. It's all a facade for you two. You didn't see I'm anything. super angry at Angela right now. I'm here because of the court agreement. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's our buffer That's right. to keep us from. Yeah, I have to legally stay five <clears throat> inches away from him at all times. She doesn't have a knife right now, I but I know. do. <laughs> all right, anyways. Uh, all right, so that was last week. We were actually in the lesson room. Today we're in the showroom. Um, but sometimes we'll shoot videos, most of the time, either in the lesson room, the main lesson room. Um, and I think he was talking about the guitar next to the Mini V. That was actually not a guitar. Oh, yeah. It was a bass. Eh. Eh. Sorry, Doug. Eh. Sorry, Doug. It was a Schechter uh, Studio Elite. Sorry. What is it? Studio, Studio 5. It's a really nice Schecter five-string bass that belongs to the Bitter Bass Man. Mm -hmm. And That's he leaves it here for some reason. I don't know. Because he's got so many basses at home. See that buckle rash? Buckle rash. Yeah. He's had this a long time. This is back when I used to work for um, the Dark Side. Uh, his bass got ejected from the back of his truck. His main bass at the time, which actually I also have here, yeah. <laughs> it got thrashed and so he needed a new bass and so I hooked him up with my employee discount, I think, back when I worked for the first order and uh, you know, got him. this was like the sickest top of the line Schecter bass at the time. 
-hmm. And so this is actually the bitter bass man's bass. That is here at the shop for some reason. <laughs> Wait, so his bass flew out of the back of the car? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was ejected from the back of his pickup truck. Um, he was moving. 20. And I he had 20. a truck and he had a bunch of his stuff in the bed of his truck and somehow it leapt out of the truck and landed on the highway. He came back and got it and it had just a broken tuning peg, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of a chip I'll on it. This to that one? Yeah, oh, it's right here, actually. <laughs> so. <laughs> Here's the base that got shredded. You can see there, there's a chip right there. And then there's the, <laughs> the battle damage. And uh, it's actually here too. So but, uh, I guess you can guess in Paul's essential gig bag, <laughs> ropes and tie downs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he needs something. But anyway, yeah, so it was a base. And there's a story about the bitter bass man. He's not even here. Nope. Slacker. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> thanks for the question, man. Next question, John Harpole. I do not like you two being real. What? John! I love it! Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Your vlogs are a bright spot in my week, and I look forward to it always. You make me slash us feel like friends. Keep up the good work. I wish you awesome. could clone yourselves and open a shop in my village. When are you getting number two CMG RNA Special Edition? Hmm. <laughs> I was thinking, if I could clone myself, but like have complete control over my clone, that would be one thing. Yeah. But if it was just another me walking around. Control. I think I would really team up like it was my twin and we would just trick people. Would it be like the twins in G.I. <laughs> Joe where like if one got hurt, the other person... Tomax and Zemai. Like, like felt the pain? Oh. That was really nerdy. Shh, Paul will love it. Wow. You totally knew the names of those. <laughs> I don't want a clone of me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't think I do either. I would be worried that... The only drawback was I would be worried that it would be better than me. In certain things where I feel like I don't have confidence, it would have confidence. You know? All my weaknesses would be its strengths. It's, it's your perfect clone. What if it wanted to do away with me? No, I have to murder it. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It would, I would be the evil doppelganger. I would be the, you know, it would be clean shaven. Yeah, I have the beard. I'd be the evil. Which one is Bizarro yes. Ryan? Yes. Is it me? The one that was clean shaven. <laughs> that would be crazy. You'd be like, yeah, I don't want a beard. I don't want to be him. Oh. <laughs> Beardless clone Ryan. <laughs> that's just. They're just getting into science fiction terror stuff now. Let's, uh, <laughs> Do we have a picture of a beardless Ryan? No, it no. doesn't exist. Uh, when are we getting number two CMG RNA? Well, thank you, John. It is. It should Moving be any time now. Any time now. Like in the next uh, couple of weeks, probably. Let's stop talking about this non-beard. Non um, it's supposed to. It's supposed to arrive at some point in April. Mm -hmm. It's not here yet. So I expect it in the next week to two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it should be pretty soon. Number two. John has number one. And so in my book, John is number one. <laughs> He's not the number one um, owns the most RNA music guitars. No. But he bought the number <clears throat> one RNA. Who does that title belong to? We want to know. figure that out. We used to have a competition <laughs> with who had the most, who had purchased the most guitars from RNA music. Tim used to be in the lead at some point. And then Mike Stevens came and crushed it. <laughs> and he then did. Mike Stevens, Mike S4628, I think is his screen name. He's actually a really cool guy. We kind of become Mike friends. Yeah, I know. Mike's great. I like <laughs> he Mike. He was the on my album. The banter between you two right. is he, yeah. awesome. He was, he was on my album. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. On the track that I had to guess on. Yeah. Yes. Nemesis. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> He's a great guy. He's, he really is. Yeah. Yeah. And He's if funny. there's a zombie apocalypse... Mike's the guy you want in your uh, entourage because he knows how to survive. Um, so I don't know who. We used to have a competition. That would be fun to revisit and see who's winning. Robert Baker used to be in there. We knocked Robert out. Robert's way in the back. Yeah. Adam and Lamar. I just had two. What was it? He's got a few. But I think Art yeah. might be leading. Art, yeah. I'm not sure. We'll have to go back and count. Sorry. Really stop it. Nervous tick. The clone! I'm talking yes, I know. Dun, dun, I'm talking dun. about thinking about guitar sales. Yeah. Um, art might be in the lead now, but I don't know. We'll have to go back and figure it out. 
Mm-hmm. You try to decide, do, ukulele, do you ukuleles count? Yes. Is it any it's instrument? Purchases. I've, I've only bought the one ukulele. Yeah. But it counts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we said, uh, whoever is winning could get an autographed picture of the Bitter Bass Man. Because <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> That's our go-to prize now. For you're talking about competition, you can win a Comic-Con photo. I think oh. we should get, like, complete, legit... Head like 1980s headshots, like done black and white. <laughs> Let's do it. Just I know a chance. guy, I know a guy who's can take yeah. pictures. Yeah, um, awesome. <laughs> I want one with thanks, my feathered hair. Maybe. Thanks for the question, John. <laughs> Next question, Ant Eater 74. Hey guys, hi from London, UK. I've just awesome. bought a Martin acoustic, lovely guitar. What's your favorite acoustic, and do you play it much? I find it helps strengthen my fingers and give me different techniques. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, first of all, I think it's awesome that somebody in London is watching our YouTube videos out here in little old East Texas. Yeah, London. London. That's pretty rad. Mm-hmm. If I show my age. Radical. All right. My favorite acoustic, and do you play it much? Well, I really only have one acoustic, so I guess it's my favorite Mm-hmm. Angela owns one, so she has an acoustic, I and I have an acoustic, and mm-hmm. it is actually uh, right here. Okay. I'm going to try not to hit anybody in the face or head, and it's a Takamini EAN40C, cedar top for the tone woods, mm-hmm. right? It's, uh, it's actually a really nice, made in Japan. It was a, a pretty, you know... Pretty good priced guitar at the time. I think they were like around fifteen hundred bucks or sixteen hundred bucks or like whatever. Solid wood. Oh yeah, solid wood. Now I didn't pay that much for it. I got it on a screaming deal for it was on clearance from a big online store because they were just liquidating them. And so I got it for a killer deal, which was awesome because I needed an acoustic. But I've been playing for a while, so I didn't want to get just like a two or three hundred dollar kind of beater acoustic. I wanted, if I'm going to have one, mm-hmm. might as well have like a, a decent one. So uh, for the price, I got it for four ninety nine. So crazy liquidation end of the year, getting rid of them to make room. Mm-hmm. And even after I got it, like a couple of months later, I would look online, and there were some mom and pop places who had them for like fifteen hundred bucks. I'm like. Yeah, because those mom and pop places can't afford to lose money on. We understand it's those not words. A, it's not a tax write off. I like those tuning heads. Yeah, I do too. It's really sweet. So this is my uh, this is my oh my favorite thing actually is the uh, I can see it. It doesn't have bridge pins. It actually kind of feeds you would feeds in like a regular. Oh. Yeah. Cause I hate pulling bridge pins. That sucks. I do too. That's why I installed the power pins. Oh, that's right. On my washboard. Smart. Smart guy. Yeah. Right, will you place that back there? Mm-hmm. Thank you. So that's my acoustic. I don't play it very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play electric most of the time. But there was a time where me and Angela were doing a lot of uh, church stuff, like Wednesday nights. We were the music. Just so acoustic I, and voice. Acoustic guitar and her singing, and we did that and. Uh, that was around the time that I got it. And it was nice. It, it sounds great. I like it. It's kind of banged up now. I let students play it, which is a bad idea. <laughs> but now it's weathered. You know, it's like trigger. Road worn. It's road worn. Yeah. It's it's tried and tested. So really, that's right. Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. So that's I, we're not even talking many dealers. Mm-mm. I am a Washburn dealer, and I don't even own a Washburn acoustic. Actually, I have a lot of electrics, but hers is, a, hers is she has a Washburn acoustic. Yep. Tim has a really sweet Washburn acoustic that he got from r Music, Teeth in the Heart, Texas. Comfort yeah. series. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when it came in, I was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a great guitar. That's, that's a, a nice guitar. That's <laughs> a nice guitar. How long have I? Two years? Has it been? Oh Maybe. My gosh. Maybe so. That guitar has been... Studio gigs, practice lessons. Yeah, it's been played. It's got miles on it, man. I've 
I played that thing from West Texas to East Texas. Nice. Mm -hmm. Tim had a great idea earlier. We're going to do a video where we kind of come back. Now he's had it for a couple of years. Because you, you did a video on your, your YouTube mm -hmm. channel. We'll put a link in the description below. You can see Tim's review of that guitar when he first got it. So now we'll come back two years later. Has it stood the test of time? That would be a great follow-up video. Mm -hmm. That was his idea. Spoilers. <clears throat> Spoilers. Spoilers. Yes, it is. <laughs> so look forward to that. That'll happen sometime. Yeah. In the future. Yes. <laughs> so so stay tuned for that. Yeah. All right, next question. Next question, JVanB231. I'm trying to figure out what that means. JVanB. Probably a name, and then 231. James Vanderbeek? I didn't want to say it. Is it James Vanderbeek? He's a fan. We have a celebrity in the audience. <laughs> What's that blue quasi Les Paul looking guitar I see here? <laughs> Again, that's going back to last week's video and last week's backdrop. But it does happen to be this guitar. I don't want to let Tim grab that. Because I might drop it from this angle. Well, James. Um, may I call you James? <laughs> <laughs> well, James. This. It's my guitar. <laughs> it, it is a Les Paul, actually. It's not a quasi Les Paul. It is a Les Paul Les Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, by Epiphone. Is that yeah. is it still a Les Paul? If it's an Epiphone, I think so. Oh, that's cool. oh, that's what the that's where the pick guard was, which yeah. you should always remove on a Les Paul. Unless it's an awesome Les Paul like mine that still has it on there. But it would be more awesome if you took it off, because then you could see the beauty. The beauty is. I shall not defile Rocky that way. <laughs> yes. I didn't even know yours had one. Yeah. Some of them do actually look good with the pick guard. Man, my Les Paul is awesome. Some some do. I wonder where you got that from. I got that from RNA to, uh, RNA Music Colorado. <laughs> RNA Music is even now in Colorado. That's right. <laughs> our, our sister store. That's right. <laughs> our, our Colorado location. And, uh, Denver. Yeah, so this is Angela's. I bought this for her. Denver, Denver. I can't remember. What did we say when, when? It was before Aiden was born, so Christmas 2000. Like 2004? 2003. Yeah. It's, uh, I wasn't pregnant with Aiden. I think it's, a, it's either a 2001 or a 2000 free. Uh, free. That too. Fr tree fitty. Um, <laughs> Les Paul. He was born in 03. He was born in 05. 05. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just as old as I am. <laughs> so uh, we found this actually. We were we were at a store, <laughs> and Angela said, "Oh, that's pretty," and I was like, "She wants it." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that is exactly how the conversation But I didn't went. say that out loud. I was like, <clears throat> all right. And so no. uh, I remembered that and I came back and got her a guitar for Christmas because yes. what? And he was just like, oh, wait, wait, right there. Right I was right there. so excited. Oh my gosh. You're going to love this. And I was like, oh my gosh, what did he get me for Christmas? She was high. Is it like a new couch? Is it like, oh my gosh, did he give me a puppy? Is it just like something like paints and a canvas? And I'm like going through all these things that I actually wanted. And this was propped up with a little guitar stand by the Christmas tree. He was like, ah, ta-da. Yay. <laughs> it was one of those like really funny parks and recreation moments where, you know, they say a really bad curse word and it bleeps. If I had those moments back then, <laughs> I'd be like, As someone asked oh, if, sorry, we Jesus. Got, if we ever got mad Happy at birthday, other. Jesus. You, you didn't like it? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I know. Like, who wouldn't want a guitar for Seriously. Christmas? I was like... <sighs> Thank you. you don't you love it? Yeah. Isn't it great? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But see, in my defense, if I've gotten you a puppy, that puppy would be dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> and this guitar is still in great shape. Wow. It's probably better than it was then, but... Mm -hmm. This is Angela's. She doesn't play it a whole lot, but it's a nice guitar. I think these were like a limited edition thing back then. They had like a silver sparkle and a red sparkle. Blue sparkle was, you know, even better. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did replace the tuners with uh, really nice, like the Gibson be polished. Les Paul Custom uh, tuners. Who it is? It's probably, it's probably Paul. It's probably Ike right now. He's getting Robert Baker. His ears are burning. Yeah. 
any through any of those three, yeah. it's probably who it is. The only thing that's been upgraded was the tuners because it had the crap plastic clues and ones on there, but I fixed that. And so uh, this is this is Angela's. Mm -hmm. She loves it. I do. It's beautiful. <laughs> and the moral of this story, kids, is buy guitars, not puppies. Yeah, just, puppies, gonna, puppies will die. Puppies will die one day. <laughs> guitars are forever, man. Even if you drop them on their neck and break it, you can always fix it. <laughs> okay, I'll admit that. That's... <laughs> Wow. Whoa. Yeah, went dark. Real wow. fast. So uh, dark. So what? fast. You can break it. You can fix a broken neck guitar, Les Paul. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't do that with a puppy. Oh my <laughs> yeah. It's <That's> terrible. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Next question. How to change the battery. Mm. Blaine Ludeman, hey y'all. Hey. Angela, why don't you play your guitars? <laughs> and what's your favorite genre and or favorite song to sing? Also, what is your range? Ryan, keep the beard. LOL. I'm going to, Blaine. I'm going to, unless they clone me. But I'm keeping it. Why don't you play your guitars, Angela? Like that really nice sparkly blue one. Um, honestly, it's because I just don't have time. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I've really, I like legit, honestly, I've never been interested in playing and playing a guitar, like never. My mom played the guitar. My dad actually plays a little guitar. Uh, my mom learned to play, um, uh, I think, House of the Rising Sun or something like that back in high school. She was a hippie. And, yeah, she was a hippie. So she learned a couple Mamas and the Papa songs and stuff like that. But um, so she, and she could still play them. Can she? Yes, she can. She's never played for me. Yeah. Um, Did you do all this when you married her? No. <laughs> I just knew she was super foxy. That's all I knew. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was just like, I, <laughs> right? <laughs> totally I. For real. Um, but no, I've never, ever really been interested in playing guitar. And now, even if I was, I just, I, ha I have to drop something else in order to pick up guitar. And I'm just not ready to drop anything that I'm currently involved in to put the effort into because whenever I do stuff I go all in and if I'm going to learn the guitar I'm not going to halfway do it yeah I was going to say it oh, yeah yeah like yeah. that she's going to go full Jeff Loomis I'm just going to go full yeah just go all the way I don't do it halfway I don't learn things halfway I learn it the whole way or don't learn it at all so I'm like I'm at the don't learn it at all stage yeah when my kids, I think when my kids are grown, maybe I'll invest that kind of time. But right now with kids at home still and all that stuff that goes along with it and Push. jobs and crocheting and ukulele. ukulele and. Yeah, who needs a guitar when you can ukulele? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. instant songs, like instant. <laughs> it's way faster. <laughs> yes. The learning curve is shorter, I think. Yeah, ukulele is like the ramen noodles, ramen noodles of the, the ramen noodles of the guitar world. Of the guitar world, <clears throat> you know. There's somebody playing ukulele right now. He's highly offended at that. Well, <laughs> ukulele will. is technically the cousin of the mandolin. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And it's, <laughs> it's fun, and it's beautiful, <laughs> and I can sing to it easier, m more easy than it than playing the guitar. I've tried to do that, and it just frustrates me. And it, like I said, if I can't do it exactly how I want to, the not the first time, but when I do it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. She would be better than all of us if she, as soon as she starts. <laughs> I've given her a few lessons, like. Okay, this is how you play a G chord. This finger and that finger. Okay, that finger and that finger. And like do this. She's like, oh, like this. Ring. And I'm like, ah, uh, yeah. Just just, just like that. Perfect. On the first try. How, how about that? Good for you. <laughs> so she has an immense amount of natural talent and mm. ability. Just, just no time. No time or <laughs> no passion for it, really. No passion for it, really. Yeah. It may be piano. I think I would probably learn the piano before I learn the guitar. Yeah. I probably would. That's okay. You yes. have me. I do. That's right. That's why I have him. If When he plays for me. <laughs> Acoustic. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? a whole nother question. <laughs> let's, not, let's not get into that right now. <clears throat> What's your favorite genre and/or favorite song to sing? 
Oh gosh. Okay. Um, Metallic. Yes. All, Led Zeppelin. Always. Er day. All day. Er day. No. Um, I would oh, say man. probably older R and B, like the old school stuff. Pre. I said this the other night. Pre. Cool in the gang. <laughs> Real R and B, like real stuff. I like the real soulful, but but fun, singable, not so filthy R and B. You know, I now I'll play "Lay Me Down" some Boys to Men album too, <laughs> like straight up, straight through, mm. no word for word, every single song. <laughs> but yeah, I would say R and B, old school all R and B, um, Christian worship. Would be my next, I guess. And, um, musicals. <laughs> but Metallica was on top of the list, right? Yeah, number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forget <clears throat> that. Forget that Hill song. Yeah, you don't Metallica. need that. All day. All day, every day. You don't need that Edda James. You need some James, James. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'd pick Metallica over Hill song. <laughs> I know, right? It's almost the same. It's not even close. Right now, it's about the same. <laughs> Not even close. Oh goodness. <clears throat> but yeah, that would be that would be it right there. <clears throat> and folk music. I do. I love great not like cheesy, but good folk music. Not accordion folk music. No. Mm mm. Like alternative, real earthy, hippie mama folk music. Because <laughs> it reminds me of my mom. It reminds me of your mom. Aww. Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. Um what was it? Oh, also, what is your range? Oh my gosh. Uh, we covered that a couple of videos ago. Yeah, we did. Um, I've had to sing, like, I've, I've sung with my dad and my sisters for years and years and years. I've been singing since I was a little girl. And I was always in the middle vocal range. So I always covered the alto range and the four of one, the four of us would sing. But I have, because I have such a low range and my voice, talking voice for a girl's voice is pretty low. I can sing most guy parts in songs. And I usually prefer male vocalists whenever I'm singing songs. Um, a lot of times, unless it's a really good alto, which, you know, like um, Barbara Streisand, it's a really great alto, but she has an amazing, phenomenal range. Um, so I can sing probably below middle C, a half an octave, and then an octave almost to a half above middle C. Yeah. So like an E below middle C, mm -hmm. up to C above middle C. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. That's your comfort zone. Yeah. Below C, middle C, <clears throat> sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has like their comfort zone yeah. range. And then there's like, well, I can sing from here to here. It's like, but can you really? Yeah. Like, I mean, can like you hit, sing it. can like, like sing really it. nail that note and yeah. really nail that top note? Or is yeah. it like Screech just... it and sing it are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. If you sound like your voice is being drugged behind a truck, that's not hitting the note. You might be in Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you might go for grunge or Cookie Monster yeah. vocals. But no, yeah, that's about right where I can sing. Without any stress. Without any stress. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good one. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Blaine. Hope you're, hope you're doing well, man. Next question, Joe McCarthy. When will we see the latest RNA CMG guitar? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, see the uh, up above. We already answered that. It should be in a few weeks. You know, mm -hmm. could could be next week. could be two or three weeks. Tomorrow. Uh, I sent off the pickups. <laughs> I was late on sending them the pickups. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were, they were, they've done the laser, the freaking laser part of it. They've already, <laughs> you know, etched, laser etched the things on it they're going to do. So it is in the build process. I would guess it's probably getting pretty close. So. Yeah. Stay tuned. You'll definitely see a video when it shows up. And, uh, you know, first one to buy it gets it. Number two of five. And then we can get on to number three. So. Number two. Thank you, Joe. Uh, oh, Joe has another question. I played when I was a teenager, then didn't play for a long time. I'm 65 and just started taking lessons again. Awesome, man. Never too old to learn. That's true. By the way, happy birthday, Angela. Thank you. I have two PRS McCarty 594 guitars. I like them. Yeah. Uh, what was your opinion? <laughs> he said, I don't know. Did you see this? No. I got to babysit a PRS McCarty 594 10 top guitar. 
that one of my students bought. <laughs> I need to, I need to <clears throat> spend more time on the internet. Yeah, you should. You're, you're missing <laughs> out, man. So he went on. Chris went on vacation. He's like, hey, you want to? Because when well, he got it, I thought he was shopping for an SE because he wanted to play my SE. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, try it out, you know. And he shows up. I'm like, that's not an SE. <laughs> and anyway, so I got to hold on to it for a week. Played it a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I should have. Sorry, I didn't call you. I should have. Sorry. Just right up the road. I know. Yeah. You could have come over. <laughs> um, but Joe apparently has two. And I'm like, what's better than one McCarty 594? Two McCarty 594s. Oh, and he's got two arms, right? So yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you alternate them. One one day, one sure. next day. Yeah. Um, I got to say, Joe, I was really impressed. It was a super nice guitar. I mean, it looked amazing. It was the right color. You missed it. Oh, so oh, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. Oh, I lost him. I'm leaving. You lost him. <laughs> that just means it was a black guitar or whatever. It was a uh, transparent charcoal burst. It wasn't black. <laughs> and uh, it was it's great, man. I, I didn't play it very much. I actually was supposed to shoot a video, like a review video, and I just did not have the time. I shot a little bit of footage, but the audio turned out crap because I had the mic set wrong. Yeah, whatever. I don't have a crew of guys. I don't have minions and lackeys to do everything for me, which would be nice. <clears throat> yeah. But um, you need to train the boys. <laughs> I, I do. I should. I don't think that's an excuse. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I mean Baker gets by. What's you know? he trains? His he son. has a son. He has a five-year-old. He does. He does the audio. I think. I thought we were supposed to discuss that because of the labor laws. Yeah. Oh, uh, Gabby does it. Oh, okay. Gabby's in charge of that. Yeah. Um, it was awesome, man. It was super beautiful. <laughs> it had a really fat neck on it. It had a very Les Paul kind of feeling neck to it. So mm. I forget what the pro. There was a special profile, I think, on the five nine fours, but it was great. Um, I only played it a few times. I didn't want to like <laughs> play it too much because it's a really nice guitar and it wasn't mine. <laughs> So I was being very careful with it, but um, returned in relic condition. Pick, yeah, pick, oh, pick scratches. Yeah. No, it was in mint condition when it was mm -hmm. returned. So um, it was awesome, man. I would love to have one. It's a little bit out of my price range <clears throat> at the moment for something <laughs> like that. But you know, I like Chris's uh, his argument to his wife was like, "Well, I could buy three or four of these other guitars, or I could just buy this one guitar and kind of that. That's all I need for the rest of my life." You know, and I'm like, that's a good argument, Chris. Yeah, I could buy. Allies! <laughs> I mean, he'll probably get another guitar in the future, but uh, <clears throat> I'm not even touching he, that. He one. got to go. It was great. <laughs> I definitely want a um, I want a core model PRS. I have an yes. SC and an S2, and they're awesome. I love them, and and someday I'll get a core. Uh, someday, maybe when I turn 50. Maybe in my 50s, that's when I'll get a PRS. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, Joe, man. Enjoy yours. I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I yes. would as well. Um, next question. I think it's the final question. Is that it? No. no. Okay. All right. I did that last night. Yeah, I did. got confused. It's because Stephen is in bold. Mm -hmm. Stephen Scharf. Hi, Stephen. My question is, will CMG Guitars be making or can they make an Explore style guitar God bless. <clears throat> uh, no. <laughs> well, I've already talked to Chris about that. Oh, and I'm a sure V. You have. <laughs> now, I know for a fact they can make a V. Mm -hmm. um, right now, they will not make a V. Yeah. Um, there's something about some kind of. There's Gibson suing somebody about something about the Vs, <laughs> which they're going to lose, was what I heard. But in the meantime, some of the small independent dealers building Vs are kind of had to put it on hold until mm -hmm. the legal stuff goes up. That's just what I heard. Mm -hmm. Industry rumors. But, Sounds like uh, another good business decision for Gibson. Yeah, yes. they, man, they're making a lot of them, aren't they? <laughs> but um, yes. he could build a one, star for them. but uh, they won't. Um, now, I don't think they can do, they don't have any CAD drawings or any stuff to do explorers. Mm. I'm sure they could, but I don't think the, the demand is there. Um, they have only built, they've built Strat styles. They've got a T style, which I actually like because it's not just a carbon copy of a Tele. It's actually 
Uh, Mark? The Mark? Yeah. 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 I, I think that's kind of neat. We've got one coming, actually. Really? It was a custom order for a customer. Man, I need to get on the internet. And I know. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll call you. We'll have to ask the owner if it... I don't know. He might let me shoot a video of it when we get it in. I think Chris sure. likes me. Chris, you like me, right? You know what I'm talking about? The guy who, who ordered the, the oh. Mark. <laughs> Chris would probably let you. I'm like, sure know. Chris would let me play. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta let the guy who custom order. It should be here in I'm a nice guy. I promise. Right. I promise. I'll I think the I'll mark be nice. will be here in July. I think. <laughs> nice. Um, but they they don't even make their S type, their Strats anymore, because they're so busy making the Ashley, which is the single cuts like that, mm -hmm. and their T style, the Mark. They don't even make the Strat styles. Um, so <clears throat> they're a little more kind of set, and like you can customize an Ashley if you want, or customize a Mark. Now you can't like customize. They make 24 and three quarter scale inch necks, so they're not gonna make a 25 or a 25.5. Mm -hmm. But you know, other than that, they can do a lot of customizations to those specific bodies. Um, but no, nah, they don't, they're not gonna make, they're not gonna make any of those. <laughs> I wish they would. Acacia will though. Acacia has actually made some Explorer bodies. Mm -hmm. They made one that was a, looked a lot like the Ken Lawrence Explorers that Ken made for James. Mm -hmm. So Acacia can build you can build one, and they've built several. <laughs> the one that the first one they made was super awesome. They've made a couple of others that like have like cow paint jobs, like black and white, like cows. Hmm. Custom orders, like I don't know why. I mean, the customer wants a cow explorer. They really but... wanted their product to move. <laughs> that was awesome. I um, think you're busy milking that. One. <laughs> <laughs> It was a little cheesy. <laughs> oh my gosh. So if you want an explorer... The stakes were high. What can I say? <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, in case you can build one, it's a lot more. I mean, you're looking probably more in the 23, 2500 range, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. for an Acacia. But, Way to uh, steer us back on track. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. Uh, I wrangle everything back together. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Stephen. <laughs> Last another question. and yeah. final question. F. Hall. <laughs> hey, man. How are you? Have you heard the Seymour Duncan Pearly Gates pickups? If so, what's your thoughts? I have heard the Pearly Gates. Um, mm -hmm. We had a diamond guitar at one point that came stock with Pearly Gates. Um, we're not really stocking the uh, diamonds so much these days, but when we had them, the one thing I did like, one of the things I liked about them was that each model they had, they just didn't stick like a JB and a 59 in every single guitar. Like for each guitar that came out, they, you know, this one's got pearly gates, this one's got a custom custom and the whatever, and they kind of spec each guitar with specific pickups to accentuate the tone woods <laughs> or tonal properties. Of those guitars so we did have one that had um, pearly gates in it and I thought it was really great I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head now like was it super sparkly or okay. I don't remember specific characteristics of it other than I thought they were pretty nice so I you know for passives I think I think I've, I've had some experience with the pearly yeah. gates, and I think tell the, me. the thing that you got to keep in mind the question you should always ask about pickups is what style of music am I going to be using these for because hmm. mm -hmm. um, some pickups are just better suited for certain styles of music, mm -hmm. you know. And I like the Pearly Gates, but for the Duncans, you know, I think the Custom Customs and even the JB stuff is mm -hmm. a little bit more versatile for a wider range. Yeah. Yeah. Of um, my favorite is probably the Custom Custom and the Fifty Nine combination. Oh, that's a, yeah. I like that one a lot. But uh, I, there was nothing about the Pearly Gates that I thought was like, yeah. Oh. No, it's good. That's why you have more than one guitar. That's the whole point. So you can have different EMGs in each of them. That's, That's why you have two PRS. Yes. With the same PRS pickups. <laughs> <laughs> in different colors? Do you need different colors? Yes. Trans black and lesser trans black. <laughs> no, no, you get different colors so you can trans black. Um, yes. You can go back. That's right. More of the black. I like blue guitars. <laughs> I like blue ones. Blue. So you had a guitar with Pearly Gates? Mm -hmm. I've had Pearly Gates off and on. I like the bridge version like of the Pearly Gates. They're just funny. Anyways. What? I like blue ones. I like blue ones. 
Blue Pearly Gates? I, got, I like blue trans black guitars. <laughs> are we still talking about cattle? I play blues on trans black guitars. Yes. Blue cheese? So you've added, you've added them then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Probably more experience than I've had. We just had that one guitar with them, and then I sold it. So. Yeah, I went through a period where I was swapping pickups quite a bit. Mm. Just trying different things. <laughs> And that's it. All I know is you've got some EMGs <laughs> in your strat, and that's awesome. I have two strats with EMGs. That's even that's twice as awesome. <laughs> and then I have strats that don't have EMGs. That's less awesome. I feel bad for those strats. <laughs> no, you're missing the point. Oh. It's it's having a wide range of tones available mm -hmm. among all my strats. I think it's just a reason to have more than one strat. You know what? You can have more than one strat, and you should have more than one strat. I don't know where I was going Should with I? that. I don't know. <laughs> maybe like, someday. Like there was a thought that sort of formed and then... Yeah, maybe someday I will have a strap. But today is not that day. <laughs> someday. All right. And those are all the questions for this week. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Tim, for stopping in. Yeah. We didn't plan him. this. He just came in to get a cable. <laughs> and then chill. And hang out. And chill. Not just to get a cable. Not just to get a cable. That's... You don't come to He's our... He's like, end. yeah, actually, that's... But, what I, know, but I really needed a cable. <laughs> you kidnapped me. <laughs> Somebody call the police. Don't. <laughs> I mean, no. you can, but don't. <laughs> no, the whole reason you come to RNA is so you can sit around and talk about all kinds of crazy stuff. Yes. Like and school lunches. Like Yeah, like school lunches and the soundtracks to the 80s and mm -hmm. Star Wars. Star Wars always comes up when I'm here. Every time. Every single time. <clears throat> it's uh, that makes me sad now. I have students who love the last Star Wars okay. movie. And I'm like, you just don't know. Well, Return of the Jedi wasn't that bad. Uh, it was great. I love Return of the Jedi. <laughs> that was the last real Star Wars that was movie, the last... wasn't it? Yeah. You know what? I think you're right. Well, Rogue One. I, I give it to Rogue One. Rogue One was I'll okay. Give Rogue One. I'll give Rogue One was all right. Yeah, yeah okay. they, they did that just They did true justice on that one. That was pretty good. Everybody yeah. died. Except for Darth Vader. <laughs> Which was awesome. Which is the great. ending was. Epic. Although chronologically, yeah. it wasn't the last Star Wars movie. Mm -mm. So yeah. the last Star Wars movie really was Return of the Jedi. It really, really it was. was. It really, it really, really was. was. Anyways, <laughs> so thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm really happy with um, the last several months. The Ask RNA videos have been doing really well. Mm -hmm. You guys have asked us great questions. You're watching. Or you're subscribing. You're giving us those thumbs ups, which is great. Keep on doing that. Ringing that bell. Ring that bell. So you can get notified when we put up videos. Ooh, because apparently, bad. did you know that when you subscribe to a channel, YouTube doesn't necessarily tell you when they put out videos, even though you're subscribed? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> you're asking me. Yeah, you haven't even been on the internet <laughs> in like four months, so never mind. I'm telling you, just because you subscribe to something doesn't mean you'll actually see their videos. I had an email address once. Do you think it's still good? Mm, probably not. Was it Hotmail? <laughs> Was it AOL.com? Hey, you're on the MySpace, aren't you? I think I still have one. Mm -hmm. I haven't checked it in a mm -hmm. long time, though. Is it still around? Yeah, it's still MySpace. there. Really? Last really? time I checked it, like yeah. a year or two ago, I was like, I wonder if it's still a thing. I'm like, it is. <laughs> Look, it's still there. <laughs> Sweet. I forgot about those pictures. Can you upload music and change your backgrounds? To I don't all remember. <laughs> you remember? That used to be the thing. You had to go get the code and yeah, upload and you had the to... code. It was the like, HTML in your like hands. hacking the matrix. Actually, thing it was like I'm, I feel like I'm doing something in the Ooh. in the interwebs. You could you could tell somebody happy birthday with moving sparkly text. Yes, you could. But you have to insert this long, long code. code. Yeah, Facebook totally sucks. They're missing out, man. They should <laughs> yeah, I, when I first got to Facebook, I was like, "What is this bland white canvas of nothingness? Where's my music?" Where are my this is lame. Where, where are my giant sparkly like? <laughs> Why are people poking me? <laughs> yes, exactly. What did I ever do to you? What is this? Two pages. What is it? A, a, my home page and the home page. What is this? What's a wall? What is a wall? I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just life. Yeah. You used to become fans on Facebook. It used to be. You used to have yeah. organic yeah. reach as well. That was great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Anyways. Right. So if you guys have some questions for next video. week. Oh, you used to have privacy on Facebook. That's true. <laughs> Not anymore. Now I'll they, Let's yeah, Now they know everything. This is weird. 
That's probably enough questions. Um, <laughs> we'll try to answer those next week. Thank you so much for the comments. We appreciate those. I try to read mm -hmm. them all if I can. I try to respond if I can to the comments as well. Yes. As much as possible. And I'm learning. She's so learning. We can't she's, she's getting it. Most of the time, if it's a response from Arnie Music. I mean, I know amazing. how to make a comment. Don't get me wrong. I'm learning to be more proficient with it. Just to, to take get, time to out of it. your busy mom schedule to actually yes. take time away from your children. Yes. To answer something. Like, hold on, mom. mom. That has to comment on somebody, some YouTube. <laughs> hold on. I know you need help right now. <laughs> Go toast a Pop Tart. Mama's got to comment on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, leave us your question for next week, and uh, we will see you then. Stay tuned for more videos. Hopefully this week, I'll actually put up some... I did this week. I did a good job. Yeah. Like two weeks ago, I had Ask RNA, and the next video was up. Ask RNA. Oh, cool. And this week, I've already got like four or five videos up. So. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see y'all next time. In the meantime, keep the music alive. Don't forget it. Music needs you. Weedly, weedly. <laughs> is that still a thing? Well, today is 420, 18. <laughs> weedly, weedly. <laughs> don't go to Denver right now. <laughs> it's a thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what that means. It's a drug thing about weed. Oh, why? Okay. Because if you go on Facebook, I don't smoke anything. I'm just saying. But I have friends who are like, hey, happy 420 to the devil's lettuce users or whatever. I'm like, oh, we know what you do. I actually know who posted that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought, you know, the government, like everybody knows everything on Facebook. Why would you put that out there? I mean, if you live in Colorado, it's fine. Or California now, apparently. A lot. There's a couple, three or four more don't, states, I think. That they yeah, don't say that in Texas, man. That's still a bad deal. Anyway, <laughs> this is... Family friendly. All right. <laughs> we will see y'all next time. Keeps music alive for the next generation. Mm -hmm. Music needs you. Bye. Something. You need music. Mm -hmm. Threw off my groove, man. I know. These are talking about crazy things. I'm bad for the business. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh. Okay.